Hey everybody, Jeff here for POD Insights. On May 17th, 2022, Etsy updated the criteria for its search algorithm, and now your listing descriptions are one of the criteria that can help you get found in search results. All right, so this is the article they published on May 17th. Keywords 101, everything you need to know. I'm gonna link to this in the description. Let's jump right down into the section about the description. And then I do wanna call out a couple other things that are good reminders about the other criteria for search. But let's go straight to uh, the, the section that's new here about listing descriptions. So your listing descriptions were always something that uh, off-site search engines like Google would use to index your listing in search results. So it helped you be found in offsite searches uh, if you had a good description, especially the first few lines of your description. But Etsy historically has not used the description field in their own search algorithm. They relied on all of the other attributes of your listing. So mainly your title, your tags, the category that your listing was in, and some of the other attributes. Uh, but now we have a section in this article that describes how they're using the description in their search algorithm. Now, this isn't a very lengthy explanation here. You can see the whole section right here on the screen. So they're telling us that Etsy search considers keywords and phrases within your listing descriptions when ranking your listings. The keywords you use across your listing titles, descriptions, tags, categories, and attributes are essential when it comes to query matching, which is the first phase of search ranking within Etsy's search algorithm. So the, the query matching, they're looking to match your uh, your listings information to the query or the search phrase that was entered by the shopper. That's the first step in, in the Etsy search algorithm according to what they're telling us here. And then they give us some tips below that. So they're saying aim to incorporate relevant keywords in the first few sentences of your listing descriptions. So there's kind of, again, a little bit of a hint there that what you put at the beginning of your descriptions is probably gonna be the most important. They also say to avoid copying your title verbatim or simply listing your top keywords. So they're telling us basically don't start keyword stuffing your description. Don't just grab all of your tags and paste them one after another in your description. Don't just copy the title and make that your whole description. Uh, they're telling us to craft a sentence or two that casually incorporates a few of your top keywords and continue to include important information that will help buyers understand your product. And that's it. That's all the information they gave us in this article about how they are using uh, the descriptions now in, in, in their search criteria. So let's think about this for a second. Then I want to touch on a couple of the other things that were already part of the, uh, the search ranking criteria. The good news is a lot of us probably don't need to go back and do a lot of major revisions to our listings. So this is not something to freak out over. If you've not been putting anything at all that has anything to do with keywords related to your, your listing in your description, then you may want to go back to some of at least some of your listings um, and update the first sentence or two in it. You don't have to revise the entire description. You don't have to delete the entire description. I still plan on basically using the same formula that I've always had for my descriptions. Let me show you an example. All right, so in the POD Insights uh, Etsy shop here, I have a listing that I created for a product that I'm going to be doing a review of uh, pretty soon, and that's actually a tie-dye shirt from Printify, so let me open this listing. So the title of this listing has three keyword phrases in it, peace day shirt, let there be peace shirt, and peace tie dye shirt. And I would have done research on that using my uh, research tool, Sales Samurai. Of course, you can use any tool that you prefer, but you would have wanted to identify the, uh, the highest search volume, lowest competition phrases to use in your title. And then of course, in the tags, I'm gonna skip the description for a second, in the tags, I would have gone to um, alter those phrases and put in different variations that are still relevant for the product, um, but that are, go beyond what I have in my title. Now, historically, what I've always done for the description here is have one to two sentences at the very beginning of the description that describe the product in kind of like marketing-y type terms. For example, in this one, I have this groovy peace day shirt features an awesome tie-dye design and let there be peace graphic. Perfect for sharing the love and peaceful vibes. Each t-shirt will have slight variations due to the tie-dye process. The base colors will be the same. So the first two sentences, very short, but they're very marketing type phrasing that have the keywords in them that also go along with my title and my tags. 
because uh, Google has always used the first few sentences of your description to index on external offsite searches, it's always been worth putting at least some short sentence at the beginning of your description that has a, at least a few of the same keywords as your title and your tags. Now, Etsy did point out, don't just copy and paste your title or all of your tags in here. So if you do something like this, just a sentence or two, put it in more of like conversational type phrasing than your title and your tags. I think this is this is uh, something, if you're doing this, you don't have to change it. Um, the only way I'd really sp suggest spending time going back and really like dedicating a lot of time to, to updating your descriptions would be if you just never put any detail about the design or about the product, like zero keywords of any kind in your description, then it'd probably be worth going back and, and at least updating some of the ones that have made some sales, but maybe they, they could use a nudge. That might be worth some of that time. But otherwise, if you're doing anything like this, where you have at least a sentence or two with some keywords, I, I'm not personally planning on changing this strategy or going back and editing any of my existing listings. But while we're thinking about titles, tags, keywords, all of this kind of stuff for our Etsy listings, let's just take a second and consider two other items that are called out in this article that Etsy provided. Categories and attributes. These are two items that often kind of get overlooked a little bit in terms of uh, their, their relevance to search placement um, because we spend so much time focusing on the title and the tags because that's where we spend the bulk of our time researching. Certainly categories and attributes don't really require much research, if any, um, but they are factors in the, uh, in the in search placement or in search uh, query matching. So it is worth understanding what's available to you in terms of options for categories and attributes and understanding just what they are. Let me just give you one example of kind of keeping an eye on this for your listings. So again, let's use the same example of this tie-dye t-shirt that I pushed from my Printify account. It came through with t-shirts as the category. That's pretty good. A lot of people see that and don't change it or don't do anything with it. However, I like to actually change it because there's one more layer you can go with this. So if I just delete the S, it'll bring up the list of categories. You'll notice there is another category for graphic tees. Basically, it's the same, the same chain of categories, clothing, unisex adult clothing, tops and tees, t-shirts, graphic tees. Where we had it, we had it as just in t-shirts. So the chain ended there. It stopped there and didn't get any more specific. If we select graphic tees, we still are going to have our listing show up in all those other categories, but also under graphic tees. And this does something else for us that's actually helpful in the attributes. Once you select the graphic tees uh, category, it gives you the ability to then select the graphic style. So what you can do is scroll down to graphic. And now this is a category that only appears once you select graphic t-shirts and actually give an attribute that is specific to what type of graphic is on your shirt. I'm gonna go with phrase and saying to give it one more specific attribute. I'm also gonna select under clothing style, which this one is available even if you're just in the general t-shirts category. I'm gonna select boho and hippie because hippie tie-dye, maybe that's a good fit for this listing to show up. So there you go. I just wanted to point out while we are on the topic of keywords and all of the different criteria that go into Etsy search that don't overlook the category being in the specific category that fits your product as well as the attributes that are there and what options are available. I always like to change mine to graphic t-shirt because for me, for print on demand, pretty much every t-shirt I put out, there's a graphic t-shirt. So I like to have that option to select an attribute for what type of graphic the design is. And that's it. So I don't personally foresee myself going back and making any changes to my listing descriptions, but it is really good to know that Etsy is using the description so I can make sure I've got a sentence or two at the beginning of every description that at least repeats some of my, uh, my main keywords for my listing. Let me know in the comments, are you going to go back and adjust any of your descriptions? Have you been doing this all along and it really doesn't make a difference to you? What do you think about this change to have the uh, descriptions included in Etsy's uh, search algorithm. If you found any of this information helpful, do me a favor and hit that like button as well as subscribe to the POD Insights channel if you haven't already. If you have already subscribed, thank you so much for coming back. I appreciate the support. Thanks everybody. See you next time.